Hello there, I'm Orinoco, and today I'm going to be your host for... I still don't know what the bloody hell is going on. What's going on? Ah, hey. oh, howdy people. I thought you would all like to join me. Um, I'm going to see if I can get this going. I found a manifold on eBay, uh, brand new, in a packet by Fast Tracks, or whatever they're called. Um, it's the actual manifold. Uh, but before I go and buy a part for it, because it's fourteen ninety nine, I'm going to see uh, if I can get it running um, to see if the engine will actually fire up and run. So we've got. Um, I'm going to try and see if I can get um, the servos to work first. I've got my other HPI um, controller because the one that's in there, I don't know. I don't like it. And this has already got batteries in it. So if I take this crystal out that I've currently got in here, if it will come out without breaking there we go um, and stick this one in uh, it should all work perfectly there we go so now I'm going to go in my little toolbox <laughs> here it is it's, this is my little battery box thing for my other Rush, for the Evo, the Rush Evo. Um, I've got some batteries here, hopefully they're going to be powerful enough. I've got three Duracells and one Hyundai. Um, hopefully they're going to have enough juice in them to power it up, just so I can test to see if the servos work. And then uh, we'll go from there. So. Turn our transmitter on, there we go. Let's see. Oh. Maybe they ain't got enough life in them after all. Alright, so I think that's going to be a bit of a foul for the time being. Um, I've put some batteries in, they've actually got power in, but it won't, there's no, no electric, well I don't have to use, I haven't tested it, but no, there's not even a peep. There's nothing, so I'm going to take that crystal out of there before I forget about it. Um, got a bit of blood on me. Uh, I accidentally stabbed my uh, stabbed my hand again. I do seem to stab my hand quite a lot for some reason. Uh, I'll put that crystal in there. Well, I won't lose that, and I'll put that there like that. All right, and there's my blue one that I took out. Was that my blue one? It's been blue. It was been blue. Right? Yeah. That's the one I added in there. So I'll put that back in there. That's for the Savage. Right then. So we can get rid of that now. So what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to try to start it up without. Um, without the server. Well, I say try. I mean, it's not. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, know, you can do that, it's not a problem. Um, it's not, not a case of trying to start up without the servos. It's just a case of I'll just have to start it up and uh, operate the throttle manually with my uh, hand, with my, rather than having it on the, um, on the transmitter. So, put that back in there like that. I'm pretty sure it's all going to be, oh yeah, I reckon that's well gelled. Let's move the camera around a minute so you can see. Can you see down there now? Um, I think I pressed the primer and you can see where the little bit of nitro fuel came up to. So I'm going to just try and force that off of there. And I'm going to get a jug. Well, the plan is to get a jug. Have I got any jugs? Well, I haven't got any. <laughs> I did have a little container, but I can't find it. So I'm just going to put it in this uh, two-stroke mixing bowl. Hopefully, uh, you're about to see what it looks like when I press the little primer button. Or not. Maybe not. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. Probably not. Like uh, 
Cool. Well, that ain't all gonna come out of there, is it? Let's flush it through with a bit of. Let's flush it through with a bit of fuel. I've got this crappy one. Um, it came with a, a friend of mine. He, oh, a friend of mine gave me his car. Well, he sold me his car many years back. It was a touring car. It was a rally car, actually, a Subaru rally car. And he uh, he gave me that, or sold me that, and it come with this little rubbishy fueling bottle. I prefer the other one I got. Anyway, so let's flush that through there. That'll be good enough for me. I could take the tank off and clean it completely but I really can't be bothered with that unless this primer doesn't work there you go it does prime every now and again oh yeah that's looking much better in there now I reckon that done the trick. That did that trick. So I'll put the lid back on that. Put the lid back on this old fuel. Get a bit of newer fuel. It's not new, it's newer. Anyway. I'll hook that back up to there. Will it go through though? Yeah, you can blow air through there. So I'm gonna heat. I'm gonna put this bit of bit of fuel in there, and then I'm gonna heat the engine up with a uh, heat gun to give it the best chance of starting. Because as I said, I don't think that it's got enough compression. I do know that some of these little engines they do. Um, some of them do have very little compression well they feel like they have very little compression um, but you never know so I've got the glow plug out now just going to see whether this glow plug actually works hopefully it does because I haven't got another one that fits it unless I've got one in the other rush but there you go yep we're glowing so our glow plug works that's one step in the right direction. A little bit of fuel in there. I'll try it actually without heating up the engine first just to see if it will fire. It might do, or it might not do. <laughs> you never know. That should be fully open. That should be fully closed. I reckon that engine's completely had it. I don't reckon there's any compression in that whatsoever. Right, well, I'm gonna heat it up now. Um, I'll make sure it gets nice and hot. Heat up all the manifold, all the carburetor, the air filter, the lock, the block. And uh, yeah, see what happens. If it does fire up, then brilliant. But I'm not holding out much hope on it. Alright then, it's nice and hot. You can probably see that it's smoking. It got so hot. So let's put a glow starter in there and see what we get. 
quite, quite a lot looser now. It does run. Well, there we go. It does run. That is all staying open in it because of the way it's kinked. Um, it got a lot looser after it um, got hot. I tell you that now, it got a lot looser. You can probably tell by the way it was. I've been able to pull it. Carbs a bit blocked up, to tell you the truth. Well, I know it runs. I know that it does run, so I'm pretty pleased with that actually. I really didn't think that was going to run. That's got a lot. The compression's come back now. See? If you go back and look in the video and compare to what it was like, or yesterday's video, when I showed you this for the first time you see what it was like there was no compression there now see we've got it back so that's a good sign I really wasn't expecting that to happen but um, that's very good that's very encouraging I just need to work out why my electrics don't work worst case scenario I'll have to get a new receiver but um Hopefully it's not that. That's another issue. Sweet. Hold on. Let's have a see what else we can do. All right then. So I've got this it's a battery tester now. It just tests batteries. Nothing. It's just an ordinary battery tester. Um, so I'm just going to make sure that the batteries that I put in here are actually charged. I assume they were charged because they come out of something that was working. So I'm assuming these batteries have got a charge in them. Um, but I'm just going to test them to make sure. So, where we want AA batteries? There we go. AA. Yeah, that one's on the green. That one's fully charged. That one's on the green. That one's on the yellow, but it'll be enough. That one's also on the yellow, but should be enough to power up the servos and power up the receiver anyway. Right, so the first port of call, we need to make sure that the switch is good. This switch here, I think I've got another one actually. Um, if it's got the same connections on it, I don't know, we'll find out. But we need to find out whether this switch is any good. So I've got a multimeter. Um, I think this is the one I blew up actually. Um, but it, I think it works. <laughs> so those of you that, that ain't watching my other channel, I was testing a transformer and something happened and uh, all of a sudden this went poof and smoke come out of it. Um, but I got two and I can't remember what one it was because they're both identical, but this one it comes on and it, it seems to work, so, oh well. Anyway, got this hooked up, there's my batteries. Uh, we know they're charged, that's attached. Um, the switch is on on now. So, take the wire out this wire comes directly from the switch and it goes into our receiver so uh, there we go you should be able to see that 
I'm obviously going to put the positive on the positive and the negative on the negative and we should see at least some voltage I don't know what we'll see that's interesting nothing not a dicky bird even if we do it round the other way nothing switch off nothing well there should there should be something appearing on there but there weren't so let's just make sure that it's coming out of here we should see voltage just make sure that my little battery case is alright because it's old little battery case is old make sure this is alright it should be we should see a voltage coming out of here if I can get it to stay on there did we get one? God, I can't get it to stay on there Bloody hell, they're not thin enough to go in the holes either. Well, it's moving anyway. Point 0.2, point 0.26, 23, 24. So we're getting something. 2.4. So, I'm going to take this switch off, um, see if the one I've got fits. Oh well, this is the switch that was on it. And this is the other switch that I had that I took off my other rush to switch over so that I could charge the battery because you get a switch with two wires come out so you can charge the rechargeable battery. Um, but it's different, different one for the receiver. So it's uh, the three pin one. And the one that I need is the ordinary little two pin one. So can't be doing that let me see if I can come up with something else all right so rather interestingly um, there is continuity on the switch um, I've got the switch here I've got the positive probe on the positive I've got the meter set to continuity or resistance whatever you would rather call it and the switch is currently off so you shouldn't be getting anything Put the switch to on. So let's put it on the negative one. Now we should be getting it on the negative only. So this switch is good after all. It just wasn't letting any power through, but I think it was. I just think this meter's at it. To tell you the truth, I think this is the meter that blew up. To tell you the truth. Anyway, so this switch is good. I'm going to put the switch back and try and work out where our problem lies. So, it's obvious that, well, to me at the moment, it's obvious that perhaps it's the receiver that's had it um, as the crystal. This has obviously never been out of the car. It's still clean. doesn't look like it's damaged in any way. It's still got the original little sticky pad on it. Someone has, he said it had little use, but I think it's had quite a bit of use, to say the truth. Someone's broken the aerial, and they've soldered it together at some point. So it's been soldered together. Um, that's not going to, you know, that's not going to stop it from powering up. It, it would just affect the reception if that's a bad solder joint, but it's just a receiver, so as long as it's soldered and connected, it shouldn't stop it from powering up. So, to tell you the truth... I don't really know how to test a receiver apart from plug it in so remember one was the steering I have got another receiver um, I've got another rush haven't I but I don't really want to be taking parts off of that rush to put it on here because that's my rush well it's, this is mine but you know it's the first it's my actual one and I'm trying to restore that so I'd rather be taking bits off of this and putting it on there. So I reckon the receiver's at it. So I'm going to see if I can get a second hand receiver from one of these cars. If any of you watching have got one of these receivers. 
HPI AM27 MHz receiver RX1. If anyone's got one that works, um, you know, let me know. I'll probably buy it off you. Um, shouldn't think I'd have one by the time this video goes up. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try another receiver. Well, I say try. I mean, that, you know, but putting a new receiver in it, that's going to fix the problem because this is the only electronics. The servos ain't going to, you know, I shouldn't think, um, <laughs> I shouldn't think both servos would have, would be dead. I mean, I should think I'd have some sort of life. I think the problem's in here, to tell you the truth. Put your comments. Um, all right, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll leave it here. We'll leave it here. Put in the comments what you think is the trouble. We've tested the switch. The switch, strangely, was showing no power coming through it, which is odd. But it does have continuity. So it should be a good switch. Um... I'm going to have to go and buy some more electrical contact cleaner because I've run out. I was going to spray it with contact cleaner, but I've run out. So I'm going to have to buy some of that. I think the trouble's in the receiver. I think this this isn't working. I think this is it's got some sort of problem with it. Um, I know, obviously, if the servos, both of them, were dead, I'm not going to get any um, life if there's trouble with those. But what are the chances of both of them being dead? I, I don't know. Unless it was drowned at some point, and all the electrics have had it. Perhaps it went in a pond or a lake or something. I mean, I don't know. Obviously, it would be dry now after all this time, wouldn't it? But the engine was all right. Well, it had, you know, I don't know. There's all these possibilities. What I could do is take the servos off and test them separately. Um, I could plug another receiver in here to test the servos, couldn't I? I could do that. But we're going to leave it here. Uh, and we'll do that in, in the next video. We'll sort out the electrics in the next video. And hopefully then we'll go for a little drive. Now I know the engine runs. Um, so in the next video we'll sort out the electrics. Uh, we'll do a bit of troubleshooting. And try a different receiver in there temporarily. Um, or if I can get one of these cheap enough I'll just buy one anyway if it's cheap enough. But put in the comments what you think is the trouble with it now. Why you think the electrics ain't working? Do you think it's the receiver or do you think both servos are dead? Do you think it's been drowned? Well, what do you think? Put in the comments. I would probably like to get a new receiver anyway, to tell you the truth, because I don't like the soldered. I don't like this. I'd rather have my aerial, just an ordinary aerial. Um, if this, if it was on one of my cars and I broke the aerial, probably wouldn't solder it together. I'd probably have to go and buy a new receiver because it's just the way I am. I like things to be good although this is fine soldering the aerial together is no trouble whatsoever he's done it well well quite well i wouldn't have had a little joint in now i would have soldered it straight but there we go um it's one of those and it? it's one of those what do you do but just put just for fun put what you think's the trouble and then uh, by the time the next video comes up next weekend we'll, we'll you'll see what the trouble was Chances are I probably would have fixed it by the time you put any comments up though. Because um, today is Tuesday and you're going to be seeing this on Sunday. So I may have fixed it, who knows. Anyway, that was fun. Well happy it ran. Properly pleased it ran. I didn't expect that. Yeah. That compression has come right back now. That is uh, brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Anyway. I'll catch you on the next one, my friends. Take care.